Here is a video fluoroscopy image uh, for, of two, two boluses that were administered during the course of a swallow study. Uh, this particular patient is wearing some sensors here from uh, the based on the research that we're doing, and I won't be talking about that. Um, and so let me just play this without any, you know, narration or help, and let's see what we all think. So this is the end of the first bolus administration. And here's the second. OK. All right, great. Now I'm going to play it again, and I'd like you to jot down some thoughts, some impressions about what what, what you observed in these two swallows. In fact, I'll play it for the first swallow. We'll pause for 10 seconds, and then I'll go ahead and play the second swallow. Here's the first. Second bolus, excuse me. First bolus. And now second bolus. Pause that for a second. Go ahead and take notes on first bolus. Okay, second bowl is coming up. If you haven't written your notes, just pause the video, complete writing your notes, and then pick up where you left off here. Here comes the second bolus administration. There we go. So go ahead and pause the video, jot down your notes on the second swallow bolus, bolus administration. I'm trying really hard not to use the word swallow because each event is a bolus administration. We'll discuss that at the end. All right, moving on. What I saw was the image, the video image loop began with barium in the larynx within the ventricle, and the patient had aspirated contrast, apparently already had aspirated contrast on the anterior wall of the trachea, and the patient's head was flexed forward. During the first bolus, what I observed was contrast was in the laryngeal ventricle at the onset of the event. Let's go back and take a look. Okay, here's the very first frame of this video. And I see contrast sitting within the laryngeal ventricle right here. Contrast coursing below the plane of the, of the larynx, the cricoid cartilage, which we're going to discuss later as a, an important landmark indicating the bottom of the larynx and top of the tracheal air column. And there's a fairly good uh, easy to see line of contrast uh, outlining the uh, contour of the epiglottis, the laryngeal surface of the epiglottis. Here the video is continuing. So again, material pooling in the ventricle here, a little bit on the on the epiglottis, but it's inconsequent. It's irrelevant because we already have a score of residue here, which you know we'll talk about scores later. And now we see a couple things going on, material from the bolus entering the larynx and material that was already in the larynx coursing more deeply into the trachea. All right, and then we see the person cough and clear his, clear his airway, which we don't really know if this is a prompted cough or a, um, a spontaneous cough. And this is very important. All right, so let's go back to the list that we had. So. Contrast in the ventricle at the onset, shallow penetration from the bolus, but also laryngeal residue that was aspirated during the pharyngeal stage. The patient did cough or exhale. It's difficult to tell without an audio tract. And material, of course, back up into the larynx from the trachea. Uh, the larynx, I'm using L to indicate larynx and T for trachea. The larynx uh, had post-swallow visible residue. Trachea did not. So I scored this a penetration aspiration score of three. And then in my narrative, we'll describe the fact that material was aspirated from previous penetration events. The second bolus, I had a hard time finding anything different. I found this to be very consistent between these two. And in fact, the description that you see here is identical to the one above. So I saw the same events occurring in both swallows, both bolus administrations. 
And so if I was just using that information to summarize what went on, uh, at the bottom is some shorthand that, that I kind of put together. Assuming that this pattern continues as a consistent pattern, I would have to interpret this as shallow, thin liquid laryngeal penetration with post-swallow laryngeal residue, some of which is aspirated in subsequent swallows. We would also want to mention that it's a very small amount of material and that the the lowest uh, uh, coursing of the material into the trachea was, and then an estimate of centimeters or tracheal rings below the uh, inlet to the trachea, which is at the bottom of the cricoid. We're going to look at all the anatomy in a couple of minutes. So, which was aspirated in the subsequent swallow. So, what do I know? I know that the patient has the capability of clearing the airway, but I don't know whether or not they're doing it spontaneously. So, there is a, an, an effective airway clearance maneuver. Uh, if the patient is already uh, spontaneously clearing the airway, then the amount of training and treatment that needs to be done will be less. Vigilance would be more the, the, uh, the, the training method. Uh, but if the patient did not, if the cough was cued, then we need to do training in pre-swallow inhalation and airway protection maneuvers before going on to any other uh, treatment tactics. So you notice in the summary here, there are no numbers, no PA scale numbers. It's a summary, a narrative summary of the results of those two events. So this is an, an example of how to reduce that information into a narrative. PA score of four. So here we're going to have deep laryngeal penetration. So you can see the arc of, of material between the epiglottis and uh, it looks like it's kind of spilling in a couple of different areas here. And the cartoon shows it a little more clearly, but the video, uh, excuse me, this is an early four. So we have the deep penetration into the larynx. And then when we come back uh, as the larynx reopens and the patient resumes uh, ventilation, we don't appreciate any laryngeal residue inside the larynx. So here's the video showing a PA score of four. And you'll notice a longer thread of material coursing into the larynx approximating but not really contacting the ventricle okay definitely having not been aspirated and as the airway reopens and, and ventilation resumes we don't appreciate any ventricular which is surprising because of that depth and or uh, um, epiglottic adherence now i said surprising but maybe it's not so surprising because the tip of the uh, column of penetration really Actually, look, uh, let's go back. This is very interesting um, because that material literally did enter the ventricle and was completely ejected from the ventricle. I'm going to keep trying to find that frame that just shows it perfectly. One more frame, maybe. Yep, right there. Notice this thread came down a little bit, got in the ventricle, the cords adducted. Vocal, the, the tube folds adducted, obviously, because this would have fallen straight through. And then as the patient continued the swallow, all of this material was squeezed out of the larynx. You know, the airway collapses from bottom to top, to, uh, which kind of explains this. So there it goes. So then we get to this whole question of what matters, what scores are important and which ones are unimportant and, and when do we react? And you know, like I tell the students when they, they ask almost any question, the answer to most questions in our area is it depends. It depends on too many factors. You know, this, we can't just look at swallowing to determine what risk the patient has of an adverse event due to their dysphagia. The penetration aspiration scale wasn't designed to make that judgment for us. It was designed to give us one piece of information to add to our other gathered information to make judgments based on all of that information. And so the point here is that, you know, these scores are really just one thing and one piece of data. Uh, um, and so the answer to what's, what's bad and what's not bad is it depends. You know, a patient who produces a three or a five, well, sure, those, because it's residue in the larynx, that can lead to aspiration. So what are you going to do? Are you going to say that that patient has a risk of aspiration? Or are you going to say, or are you going to teach them to cough to clear that out of there? You see? So it depends. Uh, is the volume of material clinging to the surfaces of the airway after the swallow enough to give us real concern? See, because aspiration isn't a disease. We all aspirate.
we have to figure out what is the is there potential harm to my patient's health not is he going to aspirate because everyone aspirates all right uh, so our job is not to just identify aspiration and change diets you all we all know that our job is to mitigate the health risks and you know what sometimes in some people aspiration alone is not enough to cause pneumonia. Uh, 